Amigos, welcome to the School of Motion Graphics. My name is CM De La Vega, and we have another exciting tutorial today. And this one is based on a video that I did this week for the NFL Network, and it is a carousel style slideshow. It is quick and easy to follow, so let's jump right in. Okay, amigos, let's get started. And the first thing is we're gonna import our images. So hit Control I, and we're gonna import. These are all the images. We're gonna use the Dodgers. The Dodgers are doing, doing pretty good this season. They're in the playoffs, one of my favorite teams. And let's click on the folder and put import folder. And the next thing, amigos, we're gonna create a new composition and let's call this rectangle. And let's make it 1920 by 1080, 23.976. And for your slideshow, I recommend it making it at least a minute long. It depends how long you wanna do it. So at least one minute, I'm making it a minute 30, hit OK. And what we're going to do is, it's in my images, let's see if we can take it out of the images. Let's take it out. Perfect. And let's go to our shape layer. And I like to use a rounded rectangle. It gives it, it makes it look a little bit more classy when you're doing these slideshows. So double click on the rounded rectangle shape tool. Double click on it, let's see it. Double click, one, two, there you go. Let me zoom out. And let's drill down to the rectangle path and where it says roundness, let's change it to about 125. There you go, perfect. And if you want, amigos, this is another option. You can create a new composition, leave all the same settings and call it circle because you can also put it in a circle. And let's go to the ellipse tool, double click, and we can drill down to the path and we can make it 1080. So you have these two options or whatever shape that you may want to use, you can use a custom shape as well. So let's create our first slide. Let's go back to the composition and let's call this slide 01 and keep the same settings, hit okay. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring in our rectangle. This will be our mask, pretty much this will be our mask. And let's bring in our first image. And well, let me use this picture of Puig. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a track map function. So right now I have track map. If you don't see it, it's because you need to click on this icon. Make sure that your image is below the mask layer and go to select alpha matte mask. Now we don't see anything and that's because we need to increase the size of this image. Actually, this is a pretty low res image. I, I suggest getting higher resolution images, especially if you're doing this in HD. But here, here you go, amigos. You can see that we have the rounded rectangles. And the neat thing about this technique is if you want to switch to another shape, for example, the circle, all you got to do is holding on to alt, you can alt and drag and swap it. And there we go. We have it in a circle. So you have the options to use any other shapes that you may want. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this slide, make another copy, control D. And actually this one, let's make it slide 02, double click on it. And all we're going to do, amigos, is come back and just swap our image with another one. And we might have to hit S for scale and just scale it down. It depends on the size of your images. So just scale it down and position it right. So we're going to do this for all your slides. We're going to fast forward because I already did all these. And the next step is, let me delete these. These are already done. These are done here. Let me show you. In this tutorial, we got all the slides. So we have, this is slide one, and we go all the way down to slide 24. Okay, now let's start building this slideshow. Let me get out of here, first of all, and click on the icon to create a composition, and let's call this graphics carousel, carousel slide show. We're gonna keep all the same settings, hit okay, and Let's go to the lips tool, double click, and let's go and drill down to the path and let's make it 1080. And make it a 3D layer, turn on the 3D switch, hit R for rotation, and let's switch it the orientation to 270. So it's laying flat on the ground. Now, go back, amigos, and what we're gonna do is go back to the path. What we wanna do is we want to make the size 2000 pixels by 2000. Now we switch it to the top view and we zoom out. 
The diameter is 2,000 by 2,000. So the diameter of this circle is 2,000. Now, if you remember your high school math, the radius is half of the diameter. So if the diameter is 2,000, the radius is going to be half of that, which is 1,000. So if we bring in our first slide. Let's bring in our first slide right here. We make it a 3D layer. Turn on the 3D switch. So here's our image. We're, we're looking this from the top view. Remember, this is our top view. This is our custom view. So you can see what's going on in 3D space. We want to move this all the way to the edge perpendicular to the circle. So we need to move it a thousand pixels. And there it is. There you go. So let's go back to our active camera and let me zoom out here. Actually, we need to create a new camera and we can make it 28 millimeter. That's fine. And let's pull out. Now let's scale this down for now. And let me bring up the little tool to calculate the distance that we need to place each of, let me switch to the top view. We need to calculate the distance that we're going to place each of our slides. Now this will depend how many slides you want to use. Now if we have, let's say you want to use, let's say you want to use 12 slides. So it's going to be 360 because there's 360 degrees in a circle. Now, a little bit of geometry, but just stick with me. So 360 divided by 12 is 30. So every 30 degrees, you're going to put a picture. Now, the example, the one that I did for the NFL, the, the video that I did for the NFL, I used 24 slides. So in this case, it was 360 divided by 24 was 15. So every 15 degrees, I was putting, I was putting a slide. So let's take that information, and we're going to do built one for 24. And you're going to have to experiment and see what size, what's the best size. Obviously, I already did it, so I know it's 10%. So we're going to change it to 10%. And what we're going to do, amigos, is we're going to create a new null object. And let's call this, let me close this. And let's call this rotate control. And let's put a couple expression controls. Go to expression control, radial angle control right here. And let's put another one. And let's put another one. So let's call this. X, ro X rotation, let's call this Y rotation, and let's call this Z rotation. Okay, this is going to be a little bit not too tricky, but just stick with me for a while. Let's drill down, go to the effects, drill down, let's pull this higher so you can see. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to write an expression, actually. After Effects is going to be doing all the work for us. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to all click on the stopwatch for the X rotation. Instead of writing the expression, we're going to pick whip it and go to the angle of the, the null object, the one that we created, the expression control. And After Effects is going to automatically create the expression for us. What we're going to do is click outside. Perfect. Let's go to the Y rotation. I'll click on the stopwatch. Same thing using the pick whip, but instead, we're going to go to the Y for here, for the Y of the rotate. Let's click outside. And one more time for the Z. I'll click. And using the pick whip, let's go to the Z. Perfect. Now you might ask, hey, CM, what are you doing? And let me explain exactly what we're doing. Now, yes, we can rotate this. But imagine if we have 24 slides. Instead of, and we want to rotate all of them, now we have one global control, one master control that's going to control all the rotation for all of the slides, and that's pretty cool. Now, one thing that I do want to illustrate, amigos, point out is that if we flip it over, you can see we can see the backside. Now, if you don't, if you don't care seeing the backside, then you can skip the following step. But if you do care, I do have a hack. It's not the perfect hack, but it'll, you know, this is what I did for the NFL. I had limited amount of time, so this is what I ended up doing. I created a new composition, and I called this back slide backslide oh slide let's put slide backside instead backside okay keep all the same settings and let's bring in our rectangle and you can use this as a mask to bring your own texture but for now let's just keep it the same gray color so let's close this and what we did is what i did is i brought it in here made it a 3d layer now remember the position of this let's go to the top view 
And remember, the position is minus 1,000. So let's repeat it. Let's put minus 1,000. Now, if we do that, the issue is that both layers are on top of each other. And we want this behind it. So all we got to do is put minus 999, one pixel behind it. And let's have the same scale, 10%. And that's it. So let's go to the top view. And all we need to do is we need to parent this layer, the back side, to our first slide. So let's parent it. Now we go to our rotate, and if we rotate it, you can see now we have a backside. Perfect. Now one more thing, we, we want to add a reflection, and I have a tutorial that I showed you how to do it manually, but maybe the perhaps, perhaps the best way is to use free plugin from Video Copilot. It's called VC Reflect, and let's adjust some of these parameters. Let's make it 75, opacity maybe 75. Let's put fall off, blur amount for one, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay, now amigos, remember that we need to, in this case, we're gonna use 24 slides and we need to position each one 20, uh, 15 degrees apart from each other. So I'm gonna show you the trick, the technique. Now, if you're using a different number, whatever number you are, you're gonna use that number, but this is a technique. So we're gonna make a copy of the slide one and the back side. make a copy, control D. We're gonna move it up. What we're gonna do is well, first of all, the first slide, we're going to connect it. Let's, let's start all over. Let's connect the first one to the rotate, right? Once we have the rotate, we can rotate this. Actually, we need to make the rotate, our null object, a 3D, 3D object. Turn on the 3D switch. So now when we rotate this, let's go to our custom view one. You can see it's moving along the circle. Okay, let's go back. Go to zero. Now... To add the rest of the slides, this is a technique. We're going to select the slide, the first slide and the back side, hit Control D. Let's move it up. And what we're going to do is go back to our project. We're going to simply go to the, our slides, simply swap out the first slide with the second one, hit Alt and drag and swap it. And we're going to unlink it, go to the rotate control, and we're going to move it 15 degrees. So you can do 0 plus 15 and it's 15, and then we, we're going to the pick whip and parent it now to the rotate. So if we go back to zero to the original one, you can see that we have the second one, so go back to 15. Let me do it one more time. We, we're going to select the, the last two, hit Control D. We're going to swap the slide with the third slide, right? And we're going to unlink it for now. Go to the rotate control, add 15 degrees, that's 30, right? And then link it again. So if you go back to zero, you see that we have the first three. Perfect. Now let's do it one more time, and then I'm going to fast forward. So select the last two, hit Control-D. We're going to swap out the third with the fourth. We're going to unlink it, right? And now we're going to move it 15 degrees more. So 30 plus 15 is 45. And then now we're going to link it, parent it to the rotate control. So now we have, let's go back to zero. We have the first three. And let me switch the top view. Actually, let's go to custom view. So you can see that we're building slowly the slides. So repeat this, amigos, until you have all 24. So let's go back here. And you can see that basically I have this. Let's go to custom view one. And let me rotate this. Once you're done, you will get something like this, amigos. That looks like, a, it almost looks like a film strip, really. And with the rotate control, you can do so many things. Let's go back. Let me go back to the active camera. What I did for the background, the background is simple. It's basically, I added a gradient ramp. And I chose a white and a gray, and you can leave it linear or you can choose radial ramp, doesn't matter. And you can do so many things, amigos. You can use a rotate control, you can keyframe these, these layers. So they're at an angle, you know, you can switch it. Or you can simply just rotate it, you know, and this is what I have. I just simply have it rotating on the Y rotation, and then you have a camera. So with a camera, you can basically punch in, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, you can do so many things. And that's what I did for the NFL. Basically, I had it on one slide for about eight 
nine seconds to show the video. And amigos, instead of a photo, you can use a video. That's what I did for the NFL. I did a combination of video, a combination of stills. And there you go. Let me play it. It's going a little bit slow. You can speed it up a little bit if you want, but that's the main idea. That is a wrap up, Mingles. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. Don't forget to join the School of Motion Graphics and the book on how to get started and make money in After Effects. Leave your comments. I'd like to know what else, what other tutorials you would like to see. And always stay creative. Let it flow like agua from Managua. We'll see you on the next one.